The first class we'll get started with, uh, we can leave the interactive base class if you're still here. Uh, what we can do now is using this, we can derive another class from this as you've seen with the enemies. So we're going to right click on the interactive base, select create a child blueprint class from this, and I'll name this one BP underscore interactive health. A few things obviously we're going to need to do first of all is make sure that the components are set up as we need them to be inside of the child class. And all we really need to do is we can select the paper flipbook and set this to be the health flipbook that we have already. And then we need to make sure that the interactive collider fits pretty snugly around the image. So I think a box extent of 25, 1 and 25 should work pretty well on that. So we don't need anything in the Y to be very deep. And it's pretty much a square image, so a 25, 25 radius seems to fit it pretty well. Next, we don't really need to do anything. Remember, we could set this if we wanted it to not play. We could set the autoplay to false. This would take effect in the event begin play. If you wanted that to happen sooner in the parent class, you can always put that on the construction script. But I think the event begin play should be perfectly fine for now. The only thing that we're really left that we need to do is add that health functionality to the player. And that's going to be done through our override function. So if we drop this down, we can find the interact function here. But all we want to do is work out a few things to happen on the interact event. So this is going to be fired as soon as the parent class function of the overlap is triggered if we hit the player. So we have the player information here that we're going to need. And there's a couple of things to consider. So you can probably see how this is going to go. We want to add health to the player, and then we want to destroy the interactive health pickup so that it doesn't exist in the world any longer. And just take a moment before we go through this together and consider which order of call that you might want to do this. So we're going to add the destroy here, here, and where we're going to call this health functionality update. Okay, so of course we know that the first thing that's going to happen is we can account for anything happening on the parent call if we wanted. So if we added the destroy call here, of course that's going to happen before we can even call the parent functionality. Now in this case, nothing's really happening on the parent functionality. So we can either remove this, all together or just plug this in and do everything after this. It really doesn't matter in this case because I know that we're not going to be going back to the parent class and adding any base functionality. So in this case, I think what we can do is we'll just show how we can go through this process without even making a call to the parent class if we don't want to. So next we have the player reference. And a handy little tip here, if you haven't seen this before, because this is now a local variable, for as long as we're inside of this function, we can search for the variable by the same name. And rather than pulling this from everywhere like we've seen in the past, we want to really avoid having wires going everywhere. We can just use the get player ref node just here. That's exactly the same thing. But this means that regardless of how many times or where we need to call this, we can reuse this variable very, very easily. And what we want to do is see if we have the health functionality set up. So we know that this is the BP underscore player base. We search for health. We can see that we have the update health function and we can set the health variables manually. Now we never really want to set the variables from one class in another. This can make it very hard to track where variables are being set and updated, especially if they start being done outside of the player class as an example. So what we really want to do, ideally we'd make these private so we couldn't even see them from another class, but ideally without that step being taken, we want to create another function in the player class similar to update health, but we're going to call this one add health. So let's go over to the player class. Remember that the update health is quite simply just finding what the current health is and updating that to the widget. So we could probably rename this to be a little bit clearer actually. So we'll make this update health widget because that's really all it's doing. What we want to do is provide a function so we're going to create a new function. We'll name this one add health. And in here, we just want to provide one input, which is the amount of health, which is going to be held by our pickup. So we're going to add a new variable here. We'll make this a float and we'll change the name of this to heal amount. So the amount that we're going to be healed and very similar to what we're doing on the damage event, if we can find that here. So on the only damage, we're going to want to set our health rather than being a minus here though, we're going to set this to be a positive. So we can copy a lot of this. I'm just going to copy and we'll paste this into the add health function. So we're going to set our health to be current health. And then rather than using a minus, we'll say plus another variable or another float. I'll plug that into the value and that will be here. So whatever the health currently is, plus our heal amount will be our new health. And again, we're making sure to clamp this so we don't do anything silly by accidentally making it lower than zero. And we won't make it any higher than the default health. So 
upload nice and simple. Copy and pasting was perfectly fine there. And we've already kind of seen this logic, so we didn't really need to retrace this too much. Now, the final thing is we can call our update health widget. And if we do this here, this is going to take in those variables that we've just changed, and this will show on screen the new health amount that we should be showing. So nice and simple, that didn't take very long at all. And that is all of the health system now implemented in the player class. Now a few things I've noticed with cleanliness though, is we have several variables of the same type, kind of all separated and taking up a lot more space than they need to over here. So this can happen in some bigger classes. What we can do to get around this is we can actually put these in different categories. So as an example, I'll select the first flipbook type and I'll put this in a category named FB. So we can shorthand this and then we can either drag the other flipbooks into this, or we can now use the drop down option and change the different category that we've just created. We can then drop this down so we can see we've saved a little bit of space on the multiple variable types there. And likewise, I'll do the same for the floats. So this is just a case of creating a new category named floats, dragging them in, and then we can collapse those when we're done. Now we've still got a few left over, but I think this will make things much easier to find now. And then those unique types are not taking up too much space. Before we head back over to the health class, just make sure that you compile and save this to make sure that this new function will be able to be located in the other class. So we're going to go to the interactive health class. And then from here, we've now got our reference we're already using. We can pull from this and we can now find that new add health function. So hopefully you can see why this is going to be a little bit safer. We're now not setting the health value outside of the class where it's being used which means inside of the player class, just as a recap, we now know that this health function or this variable is only being updated either in the add health function or the damage section of the event graph here. It means that if we're ever kind of debugging through this, we know where to look if something strange is happening with the health. Whereas if you start adding these calls to set variables from other classes, it starts becoming a little bit harder to track down where multiples of health might be getting changed to something at some point in your project. So the final thing is we can set this to something like 10 for the heal amount. And I'm going to promote this to a variable. I'll name this one health value and just drop this down and tidy the nodes up a little bit here. We can also make this public, hit compile. And the reason that we've made this public is now when we drag this into the world, so we'll come back a little bit, we'll find our interactive health, drag this in, make sure that this is on the zero axes and the Y or zero value on the Y axis. And if we drag this and add a few different health components or uh, health pickup, sorry, we can change the value in the editor here by making this public. So again, we can add some variety to these. So this one can be worth 50, this one can be worth 30, and we'll leave the first one at 10. Uh, we can now come in and test this. So we're gonna want to find an enemy to deal some damage. We've set the enemy to completely kill us in our test. So make sure that we go back into the player class if you forgot to change this back down to something a little bit more manageable. So the player damage was set to 100. We're going to want to set this down to something like 20 again. Compile that so that we don't die immediately. And this gives us some time to test the health value. Okay, so we can see this is being picked up. Uh, we can also see the one thing we forgot to do there in the interactive class we haven't fully finished. Uh, we can Check though that the different health values were working. That all seems pretty good there. The final thing, of course, is once we've interacted, once we've added health, like I've said, we just want to destroy the actor being interacted with. Or actually, no, that was wrong. Don't destroy the actor being interacted with because the one we're interacting with would be the player. Uh, obviously, we don't want to destroy the player. We're going to destroy ourselves so that when we come in, we can now add some health and we can see that's being picked up. Take a bit of damage. And then we can come over and collect our health pickups. We're getting healed. They're being destroyed. So we have a fairly standard health pickup implemented. So if you've been enjoying this topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you'll get the updates as soon as the next topic in this playlist goes live. And remember, if you wanted access to the full mini course all in one go, you can get that through the Skillshare link down below or through the gold tier Patreon or above rewards. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the people already supporting me over on Patreon. It is of course your support that allows me to make the more in-depth topics like this mini course for the channel. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.